In this video, we're going to try and answer a question that seems to be cropping up in conversations about login and visibility in Azure networking. Now that we have newer products in this area, which is, should I use virtual network flow logs or should I use express route traffic collector to get visibility into flows across my Azure network? Slight spoiler. The answer is there's an opportunity to use both and reason to use both. But in this video, I'm going to briefly show you both features side by side and then give you a comparison pros and cons of each, which will hopefully highlight that they are fundamentally different products, but complementary in how you can use them. So in the previous videos, you've seen this as our topology, basic hub spoke network, where I enable flow logs across my hub and spoke VNets. And I've also enabled express route traffic collector on my express route circuit being used to reach my green on-premises network here. In the portal, as we've seen before, this looks relatively straightforward. At the moment, I've just got flow logs turned on my hub VNet. As you've seen in previous videos, I've done some comparisons of hub and hub spoke enablement. Just imagine you've got all the VNets enabled there. And by doing that, this allows us to query after integration with traffic analytics, this table here where we can pull out the logs of our traffic. Notice there's a very high volume of logs here, almost uh, 2,700 logs. And you can see there's a very large amount of data I can scroll through here. This data is coming from the Azure SDN, the VNet level, and we get lots of rich information such as the type of flow that will be kind of intra VNet, inter VNet. Is it going public, etc.? Obviously we get source and destination IP, destination port protocol, even some information around the ability to build topology information. There's a separate log, a separate traffic analytics table focused on topology information. Target resource ID is regarding the flow log itself. Target resource type VNet. And then we have information on the subscription. You know, if you have different subscriptions in your spoke VNets, for example, maybe multiple VNets inside of the same subscription source and destination region. So if we're enabling flow logs everywhere and we want to quickly parse information of where all our endpoints are, information down to the NIC level, which of course is a, a VNet level construct, the name of the virtual machine, which again is being pulled from effectively in the region where the VNets are, same with subnet level information. We've shown before how we can highlight express route flows, traffic to and from on-prem, same with some connection level information around VPN, whether or not we're using encryption inside of the VNets using the new VNet encryption feature and packet counts, details on public IPs and whether or not they are malicious. And then some data on if it has hit an NSG, has it been allowed or denied? And then finally, some information related to private endpoints and private link if the traffic is destined towards them. So that's flow logs. So you can see it's very, very rich in its nature, very voluminous. You know, every single flow is logged with a high fidelity of data. Then we talked before in a previous video about Express Route Traffic Collector and how I've enabled it on a circuit here. Again, this ultimately goes to log analytics where we can again pull the associated table. Now, one thing to acknowledge here is that we haven't got the traffic analytics overlay Therefore, we are dealing more with the raw data. This is a fundamentally different product, as we'll talk about in a second. Here, for a similar time frame, I've only got 100 flows, and that's because of the sampling rate. It's much lower, so we, we, this, this will roughly log one in 4,000 packets, whereas flow logs will log every packet, or at least the, the data of the packet. And we can see straight away that the scroll bar here is much smaller. We get less information because fundamentally this is coming from Microsoft Edge routers that are not inside the region. The type of information we get from traffic collector are things like, of course, the express route circuit ID, which will be useful if you've got multiple circuits. Service key of the express route, probably not that useful. Source destination IP address, which will, of course, be the main filter that you use. Port. Some Unique information like protocol, is it ICMP, is it TCP, etc. Uh, byte counts, number of packets, of course, that'll be normally what you summarize on. Class of service, 
probably not super useful unless you're applying that in some element of uh, voice or looking at Microsoft peering. ICMP, that gives us a slight hint there at one of the positives here. We, we have the ability to log ICMP with Express Route Traffic Collector, which you can't do with flow logs. And then some BGP level information about ASNs. That's going to be broadly similar for most logs because your ASN will normally be the same on-prem across your circuits. And then peering type. So this, again, is where we can see private peering data, but we can also see Microsoft peering data if you're using the Microsoft peering to get to public Microsoft services. A VLAN tag, which corresponds to the, the tag you've assigned to, or the customer VLAN tag that you've assigned to your primary and secondary express route connections. Okay, so you can see it's a different set of fields, a, le a lesser set of fields and a different service. So if we attempt to take that previous five minutes of dialogue and condense it into some pros and cons, on the left here, I've got the value which we're going to assess the service on. In the middle column, we've got express route traffic collector. On the right-hand side, we've got VNet flow logs. So let's start at the top. Is it sampled data? Well, we said yes, Express Route Traffic Collector is a sampled data service. So it's giving you a feel for the profile of traffic on the Express Route, whereas Flow Logs is one to one. So one's going to give you very good troubleshooting data, nail every packet, but generate a lot of data. The other one's going to be less data, more about giving you a feel for who's using the most traffic. Now, of course, if you're sending a lot of data, one in 4,000 sampling won't actually be that severe because there'll be millions and millions of packets. So even sampling at one in 4,000 will still give you a very good appreciation of the, the bandwidth splitting, etc. Where do we collect the data from? Well, Express Route Traffic Collector comes from the circuit in the edge network. Flow logs come from the VNet or the Azure Software Defined Network from the NICs, etc. that make up the the virtual network constructs. Can you log express route data? Well, of course, with express route traffic collector, you can. That's kind of the clues in the name of the product. And um, one thing to mention here is it's only usable on circuits which are one gig or higher, because if we sample any lower than that, a lower throughput, the sort of level of anomalies is probably too high to be usable. Flow logs, we have to be careful with express route data. And when data comes into Azure and goes through the gateway, if you apply flow logs to the hub, that will log that underlying virtual network gateway traffic coming into Azure. And if it goes to a central firewall and then to a spoke and back to the firewall, then you'll see all of your express route flows. But if you're sending traffic through the gateway to a VNet in a spoke, when that traffic comes back to on-prem, it will bypass the gateway for most traffic so maybe you only see one half of the express route conversation with flow logs if you've only turned it on in the hub. But as we talked about before, you really should be enabling flow logs everywhere, in which case you will see both sides of the conversation. So that's really a yes for both if we're using it in the right way. Of course, you can use flow logs with any level of express route circuit, any bandwidth throughput. So that's probably the way to go if you're using less than one gig. We talked about the richness of the, the VNet field uh, data like uh, subnet, NIC, VM, name, etc. With flow logs, you get all of that. With Express Route Traffic Collector, you're really going to be scoping your data based on destination and source IP addresses and, and building your queries based on that. One benefit of Express Route Traffic Collector, because it is at the point of the edge and has got visibility into customers connecting into the edge for Microsoft peering means you can log traffic going to public IPs. Maybe you're still using it for Office 365, et cetera. Um, and of course, global reach is one consideration. If you're sending traffic into Azure via express route, traversing global reach to another express route circuit, going back to on-prem, or maybe going to Azure VMware solutions, that's going to be captured by traffic collector. But of course, VNet flow logs are not applicable there because that traffic's not going near the, the VNet layer. ICMP data, we've said traffic collector supports that, flow logs don't. Private endpoint data, uh, yes. So if Express Route Traffic Collector will log that traffic. If it's going to the VNet and the destination's a private endpoint, it will just see it as a, another IP address. 
the traffic collector will have no idea that it's ultimately a private endpoint. With flow logs, if we turn flow logs on everywhere and the traffic is ultimately coming from a node in Azure, like a gateway or another VM to a private endpoint, it will be logged at source. We don't have the ability to log at destination with private endpoints, but that's not a huge issue uh, if you enable flow logs in most places. We've already talked about the richness of the schema. You get more data with uh, flow logs. Traffic analytics support. So there's more ability with flow logs to sort of skin the data with traffic analytics uh, and present it in a, a more user-friendly way out of the box. And then on pricing, this is where there's some differences as well. So let's jump down here and zoom in. So traffic collector is made up of two components of pricing. There's the cost for the, the collector. So traffic collector is sort of sitting in your space and, and every hour that service incurs a cost to receive traffic from these circuits. So that will be, you know, for example, zone one there, 60 cents per hour times 730 hours per month. You're probably looking at $400 a month for the service plus your data processing costs of 10 cents per gigabyte. And of course the processing cost, processing data capacity or, or level is much lower because of the sampling. Whereas with flow logs, you are looking at, again, two levels of pricing. You get charged the 68 cents per gigabyte for the flow log processing. And then if you're using the 10 minute interval traffic analytic processing, which means you, you want to be updated every 10 minutes rather than every one hour, you're charged a further uh, for $4.79 per gigabyte for the traffic analytics processing. So you see the, the amount of data and the processing charges are much higher with, with VNet flow logs and traffic analytics. So you need to keep an eye on the sort of incremental cost over time per gigabyte, whereas the traffic collector is more about a sustained monthly cost for the collector service and less data processing. So in an ideal world, you would enable both of these services because as we said, there's pros and cons to each. If you have a complex global network with circuits connected in many places, used for different scenarios, maybe there's some scenarios where you'd only get the data you need from traffic analytics. Probably you're already using flow logs or looking at using flow logs for many other reasons, apart from just your hybrid visibility, visibility between regions, visibility inside of spokes, visibility from spoke to spoke via hubs. So there's probably a place for both there. If you have got flow logs enabled across your hub spoke network, then you'll be able to pull out your express route data, as we said. But if you want it pulling out from the circuit level, that's where traffic collector comes in. But hopefully this video has given you an idea of, of where each service plays, how they're complementary and when you might choose one over the other.